What? <laughs> oh. There was once a king who had an only daughter who had always been ill and no doctor had ever been able to cure her. She was so ill, she was covered in horrible green stripes and thought she was a deck chair. Once, when the king had folded her up for the night and gone to bed, he dreamt that his daughter would get well by eating an apple. So he proclaimed, Right, whoever brings an apple that will make the princess better can marry her and become the king instead of me. All right? Well, a farmer who had three sons heard this and said to the eldest, Right, go out into the garden, eldest, grab a basket of apples and get round to the king's palace pretty sharpish. Give the apples to the princess and you'll be king. Easy peasy, said the eldest, and went off with a big basket of apples. And on the way, he met an ugly, dirty, little man. Get out of the way, you ugly, dirty, little man. Oh, certainly, sir, said the man. Eh, but would you mind telling me what you have in that basket? If you must know, you nosy little bogey, it's full of... Uh, it's full of slimy toad's legs. Thank you, said the little man. If you say so, so shall it be. And he went on his way. Well, the eldest son arrived at the palace and boasted, I've got the apples here, Mr. King, so give them to the princess and I'll try on the crown now, if you like. Hey, do you want a hand with your packing? <laughs> but the king opened the basket... And it was full of slimy toad's legs. Going, 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 still kicking about and jumping around. Here, what's that? I suppose you think that's funny, said the king. How dare you? And he chased the eldest son out of the palace with a stick. Bonk, 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 snap. Oh, poke, poke, poke. So, the farmer sent his middle son instead. Hey, you, middle son, whatever your name is, you take a basket of apples down to the palace and make sure you come back as the king. But on the way... The same thing happened to the middle son. Oh, hello. And what's in your basket? If you must know, you know the little dog poo. It's full of... Uh, it's full of hairy pig's noses. Oh! If you say so, so shall it be. And when the middle son opened his basket in front of the king, it was full of hairy pig's noses, still <coughs> sniffing and <coughs> snorting. Not funny! Not funny! screamed the king and bit the middle son so hard he had to run home with the king's false teeth still stuck in his bottom. The farmer couldn't believe that the middle son hadn't got to be king either. Well, that's it then. No kings in this family. I'm so disappointed I could, I could burp. And he did. <laughs> but the youngest son, who the farmer kept in a dustbin because he didn't like him much, said... Oh, father, let me take some apples for the princess. You, said the farmer, but you're hideously ugly. Why do you think we keep you in a dustbin? Even if you did cure the princess, she wouldn't marry you, hideous. Because that's what they called him, hideous. But hideous wouldn't stop asking, oh, why not? Oh, why? Why not? Well, I mean, why not, Dad? Why? I mean, no, Dad. Why not? What, Dad? Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh, for crying out loud, go on then. Just see what the princess says when she sees someone as ugly as you giving her apples. She'll probably get even more ill. She'll probably turn into a whole set of deck chairs with picnic tables to match. But Hideous didn't care what anyone said. He was so excited, he danced around all night singing, I'm going to marry a princess, I'm going to marry a princess, I'm going to marry a princess, and all sorts of things like that. Yeah, because I'm going to marry a... Oh, give over, said the farmer. Just get on with it. And Hideous danced all the way to the palace. And when he was almost there, the dirty, ugly man stepped out. Hello, similarly ugly person. How are you? Well, I'm very well. Uh, could you tell me what's in your basket? Why, certainly. I have some apples here to cure the princess of her illness. As you say, so shall it be, said the man. And he, he, he ran off. But when Hideous knocked on the palace door, the posh butler said, Oh, no, not again. We've had toad's legs, pig's noses. We're not having anything in baskets anymore. Clear off. Ooh. But no, you've got to believe me. 
these are the apples that will cure the princess. All right, let him in, Conan, said the king. But this is the last time. Right, you stand there and don't open the basket till I say so. I don't want something horrible leaping out at me. And the king climbed up on a chair at the other side of the room and hid behind some bishops, while Hideous tipped beautiful golden apples out onto the floor. Oh, it's safe to come out now, said the bishops. It's only apples. I know, I know. I wasn't really scared, said the king, and ran to give the apples to the princess, who was out on the beach with an old lady sitting on her. Well, in a matter of seconds, the princess was completely unstripy and well again. The king was very happy that she was cured, but he liked being king and didn't really want to give his crown to someone else. Can I be king now? asked Hideous. Mm, no, said the king. Uh, not quite. You see, <laughs> before you can be king, you've got to, uh, you've got to, uh, what's something really dangerous? I know. Uh, <laughs> I want you to get me a feather from the griffin's tail. Fine, fine, fair enough said Hideous. It is not fine, said the princess. The griffin lives thousands of miles away. It's a huge bird with lion's claws that likes to eat people. It's too dangerous. I think I preferred you and you as a deck chair, said the king. Well, I'm better now, said the princess, and I can speak for myself. I love this kind-hearted young man and I want to marry him, even if he is ugly and hideous. How do you know my name, said Hideous. Oi, 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 I'm the king, so go and get a feather. All right. So off went Hideous. He walked for a while, then he ran for a while, because he had a long way to go, and arrived at a lake hundreds of miles wide. And instead of a ferry boat to take people across, there was a tall, tall man, as tall as 36 bean poles, standing on top of the Eiffel Tower. And the tall man had to carry everybody across. Hello, Shorty! said Ugly Hideous. Oh, tee hee, everyone does that joke, said the tall man. Where are you going then, handsome? I'm off to... I'm off to see the griffin! Oh, hey, the griffin knows everything. So ask him why I have to carry everyone across the lake all the time. Why, certainly, said Hideous. And as he reached the other side of the lake, he saw the griffin's house. He knocked on the door. <gasps> And the griffin answered, Good, 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 good evening, gri 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 griffin. Uh, oh, God, dear, no, God bless your soul, dearie. I'm not the griffin. <laughs> I'm the griffin's wife. And lucky for you, too, because if my husband saw you, he'd eat you up. I've tried to stop him, but that's just the way he is with humans. Oh, no, that's a shame, said Hideous. I've got to get a feather from his tail and find something out. Well, no, don't, don't, don't. I'll tell you what, Chucklebum. You hide under the bed, and when he's asleep, you can pull one of his feathers out. And as for finding out something, I, I think you better let me do that. <laughs> no sooner was Hideous hid than the griffin came griffling in. This is Griffin. I can smell a human being. Yeah, that's right, love, said Mrs. Griffin. There was one here today, but I soon sent him away. God, I don't want any of them in the house, said the Griffin. And <laughs> went straight to sleep. And when he heard the Griffin snoring, Hideous reached out and Ing! pulled the feather from his tail. The Griffin woke up instantly. <laughs> ah, my body, Mrs. Griffin, I smell a human and someone was pulling at my tail. Oh, you've been dreaming, Blossom, said his wife. I told you before, there was a human here today, but he went off again. I knew he was a pretty strange human. He told me all kinds of strange things. He said, there's some tall fellow who has to carry people across the lake and he, he doesn't know why he's doing it. Ah, all humans are as stupid as, as, as bat poo, said the griffin. All the tall man has to do is to drop one person, we splash into the lake and no one will ask him to carry them across again. <laughs> anyway, wife, I have had enough sleep. I'm going out again. Goodbye. <laughs> and as the griffin left, Hideous crept out behind him. <laughs> Dreadful, isn't he? said Mrs. Griffin. But 
He makes me laugh. Here, have all his money. Now run home quickly. And Hideous ran to the lake, and when he had been carried safely across, he told the tall man what the griffin had said. Oh, that's fantastic news! So I just dropped the next person I carry right in the lake. Yeah, I don't suppose you fancy another trip across the lake. <laughs> no, thanks, said Hideous. And he carried on running until he was back at the palace. The king was furious when he saw Hideous arrive back safely with his hands full of money and the beautiful golden feather from the griffin stuck in his hat. <laughs> yeah, hello. I well, see so you've got a feather then. Where'd you get all that money from? I got it from the griffin, Hideous explained. Uh, uh, the griffin gives anyone whatever they want. Cool, blimey, is that a fact? Oh, I'll go and see that griffin myself, said the king. And with a hop and a heave, he arrived at the lake where the tall man was waiting for someone to come along. And as the king was the first person to come along, the tall man, woo, splash, dropped him in the middle of the lake and went off to become a drain pipe, which is what he'd always wanted to do. And the king sank to the bottom of the lake and had to be a servant to the fishes forevermore. And so it was that things ended happily for Hideous. He was married to the princess, and although he was the ugliest king there ever was, everyone agreed that he was the nicest. Not like me. <laughs> Woohoo!